I was a youngster, I remember going on my first date. And I went to my mom and I said, Mom, I don't have anything to wear. Can we please go buy some clothes? And she said, no, of course not. And she ran to my cupboard and she grabbed a bunch of shirts, at least five, some pants, at least three, some socks and some shoes. And she said, Heinrich, look at this. You can make at least a hundred different outfits. And I said, no way, no way, Jose. So today we're going to find out who was right, me or my mom. The fundamental counting principle. Now, this thing you know is very important because it has the word fundamental in it. And what it says is if event A can happen in N different ways and event B can happen in M different ways, then the number of ways in which A and B can happen together is N times M. Let's have a look. Cinderella has three rings and two necklaces. How many different jewelry combinations can she make? Now in the past, you would have solved this by drawing a tree diagram. So you would have said she's got three rings and each ring can be paired with two different necklaces. And then you would have counted, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six different ways in which you can combine the rings and the necklaces. Now we're going to apply the fundamental counting principle in order to solve this without having to go draw tree diagrams. So let's call choosing a ring event A and let's call choosing a necklace event B. Then the number of outfits is going to be the number of ways you can choose A multiplied by the number of ways you can choose B. And that's going to be 3 times 2 is equal to 6. So we get the same answer, so we know it works, but uh, far less work, which is ultimately what we want to do. Then, example two. Gandalf the Grey is going to a ball. Gandalf the Grey has three different hats, six different cloaks, four different pairs of boots, and two wizarding staffs. How many different outfits can Gandalf the grey way to the ball so he can make sure he looks fabulous, right? Well, let's see. We're going to apply the fundamental counting principle and we've got four events choosing each of these different parts of his output. And the first one is going to be choosing a hat and we know he can do that in three ways. The next one is going to be choosing a cloak and he can do that in six ways. Then he has to choose a pair of boots and he can do that in four ways and then he has to choose a staff and he can do that in two ways. So the total number of outfits is going to be three times six times four times two is going to be 144 different outfits that Gandalf can choose in order to look very fabulous at the ball. Right, now we are going to introduce factorial notation. So there you have five, or, or actually it's, it's five factorial. So if you see an exclamation mark next to a number, in math that doesn't mean scream five out loud, it, it actually means five factorial. Uh, and what does that mean? So if we have something that is n factorial, that means n times n minus one times n minus two times 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 till you get to two times one. Uh, so that looks maybe a bit cryptic. What does it mean in real life? So for example, if you've got 5 factorial, that means you're going to take 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And that is equal to 120. So 5 factorial equals 120. And 7 factorial would be 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times two times one. And that's going to be equal to 5,040, right? So that is how we use factorial notation. And then an important note there, a definition, is that zero factorial is equal to one. So that's just one of the things we've got to know about factorial notation. And we can use our calculator in order to do factorial notation. So let's have a look at how to do that. Say I want to calculate 10 factorial. What I'm going to do is I'm first going to enter the number 10 into the calculator and then I'll hit shift and hit that button over there with the x factorial 
on top of it. And then I'll have 10 factorial. And when I hit equals, I'll get a pretty big number, which is equal to 10 factorial. Permutations. Permutations are any of the ways that we can arrange a set of things where the order is important. For example, you might have a windowsill at home and you might have three plants that you have placed on your windowsill. But you might be a little bit picky with how to arrange your plants. So you would think of this as a possible permutation or that as a possible permutation or even that as a possible permutation of how to arrange your plants on the windowsill. So the question, in how many different ways can three different plants be arranged on a windowsill? Right, now we're going to make this a little bit more abstract and we're going to think of it in terms of position one, position two and position three. The three places we can put plants on the windowsill and choosing the first plant to go into position one we're going to call event A and we have three plants to choose from in order to put it in that first position. So we have a three there for event A. There's three ways in which event A can happen but now we've chosen a plant to put in position one and now we only have two plants to choose from. So when event B comes around, which is when we select the second plant to put on the windowsill, we only have two to choose from. So there's two possible ways for event B to occur. And then we only have one plant to choose from for the third spot on the windowsill and that's going to be called event C and there's only one way in which to do that. So the number of arrangements is the number of ways we can do A times the number of ways we can do B times the number of ways we can do C is going to be 3 times 2 times 1 is equal to 6. Now I want to draw your attention there to that 3 times 2 times 1 because that as we now know is equal to 3 factorial and now we might see the use of this factorial notation thing. So introducing a counting rule. The number of ways n unique objects can be arranged is n factorial if objects may not be repeated. So on your windowsill you can't put the same plant twice because you've already put it somewhere else. So you can't repeat objects. So for example, in how many ways can 11 football players line up to run onto the pitch, right? Well, there's 11 unique football players and we're trying to arrange them. The order matters and we can't repeat a football player. You can't have the goalkeeper run on first and last. That's not gonna work. So the solution there, the number of arrangements is simply going to be 11 fact which is a massive 39,916,800. So that's a pretty big number. But then take note, we only use n factorial if selecting an element means it cannot be selected again. So if the goalkeeper has run on, he can't run on again. If you've put a plant somewhere, you can't put it there again. But sometimes we can use objects again. So for example, in how many ways can a three digit code be made from three different symbols if the symbols may be repeated, right? So we're gonna do the same thing, position one, position two, and position three. Then event A is we choose the first symbol and we've got three to choose from. So there's three ways event A can happen. But now that we've chosen a symbol, we can still choose it again. So when event B comes along and we've got to choose another symbol to put in position two, we can still choose from the three symbols. So there's three ways in which event B can happen. And then we've still got three symbols to choose from for event C. So there's three ways in which event C can happen. So the total number of arrangements is going to be the number of ways we can do A times B times C and we get 3 times 3 times 3 equals 27. And I want to draw your attention there to 3 times 3 times 3 because that's equal to 3 cubed. So you've got another counting rule. The number of ways n unique objects can be arranged is n to the power of n if objects may be repeated. For example, in how many ways can a 26-digit code be made only from letters 
from the alphabet where letters may be repeated. So you may repeat letters and there's 26 things that you are choosing. So it's going to be 26 to the power of 26, which is a disgustingly big number. And there's no need to write that out. We can just leave it as 26 to the power of 26. So in summary, the fundamental counting principle states that if event A can happen in N different ways and event B can happen in M different ways, then the number of ways in which A and B can happen together is N times M. And then we learnt a counting rule. The number of ways N unique objects can be arranged is N factorial if objects may not be repeated or the number of ways n unique objects can be arranged is n to the power of n if objects may be repeated. Well, there you have it, the fundamental counting principle, which is something you can always count on. And if there's something that I count on, it's the role of practice in improving mathematical understanding. So if you wanna understand what you just learned, well, you've gotta practice it.